what's shaking my friends welcome back to my channel my name is Shay and today we're gonna do a big old book haul so I don't buy books that often like not enough where I can haul regularly however this month it has been my birthday month and so I have racked up enough books I have gone to Orlando and I have brought another shelf from Ikea and I need to promptly put these books on the shelf so it won't look so empty not that I mind it being empty because I like the space. But we're gonna go ahead and haul some books. I have some more coming. Those will be in the next haul. We will do this haul for now. And it is a lot of books. So let's just jump right into it. First, we'll go ahead and show you guys the Adult Fairy Loot Edition of In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. I have not read this yet. I want to. I also like the US cover of this. This was the April pick and you can see that it is also very stunning. Edges under the dust. Oh, there's nothing about it, but great in papers. It's signed. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous book. Then we will move on to the adult fairy loot book for the month of May. So this is The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas, if I'm saying that right. I had never heard of this book before, but this is a stunning cover. If you would love to see how the naked hardback looks, it is stunning sprayed edges. It's got wonderful in papers. It's of course signed. Next, something that I bought this month is going to be Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. If you don't know, I read this in May and absolutely adored it. I didn't expect to, it was such a surprise, but loved this and just had to have a physical copy of it. Five out of five stars. A book of the month pick, I think this was for May, is The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer. This book deals with grief. She's a death doula. Yeah, so she's a death doula and me working in oncology and kind of palliative care and that kind of, you know, nature of my job. I'm super interested in reading this and seeing what it has to offer. Another book that I got was, of course, The Last Word by Taylor Adams. I read No Exit by Taylor Adams and I wasn't like the super fangirl that everybody else was, but Everybody has been raving about The Last Word, and so I thought I would give him another chance. I did read Hairpin Bridge, and I wasn't a fan, but this may redeem him. Next, we have The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schrieffer, and this is a book that I absolutely adored last year. I wound up giving it about four and a half stars, but rounded up to a five after I just could not quit thinking about it. This is a sci-fi mystery. Why am I? I'm supposed to be on the ship alone, but it doesn't appear that I am. I kind of man male romance and I loved it and I would highly recommend this. Then for my June pick of book of the month, I got Ink Blood Sister Scribe. I'm not quite positive what this book is wholly about, but it's gotten some really great early Buzz, in the spellbinding debut novel, two estranged half-sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection. A tale of familial loyalty and betrayal in the pursuit of magic and power. So, sounds like some mystery vibes going on as well. And it features a library. Also, uh, I am a recent subscriber to Birkin Binding, which I'm super excited. I got into the tier two subscriptions. So I have the bone chips um, with the wonderful sprayed edges. And here is the naked hardback, which these are freaking gorgeous. And then I have the second book called The Bone Chips, the naked hard cover. And then the third one is on its way to me. So I will have the third one soon. Then for my birthday, one of the members of my book club got me something. How sweet is that? She gave to me Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I've heard nothing but great things about this, but I've also heard some very polarizing opinions. So I'm interested to know where I fall on this and I can't wait to get to it soon. She also, Miss Laura, gifted me The Wolf in the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. This is an adult fantasy. Um, the Wolf and the Whale blends Inuit and Norse mythology into an epic adventure in the frozen Arctic 1,000 years ago. So I've heard really great things from the people that have read this book. And so it has been on my want to read shelf for 
the longest, longest time. So happy to have that now in my possession. I also, if you remember, I unhauled my copy of Iron Gold and I have since repurchased a copy of Iron Gold. I unhauled the cover that I brought secondhand used that had like glue in, and some of the pages were ripped and torn and so I brought me a brand new copy. Interestingly, it had like this, the one I unhauled had like this shiny cover and this is kind of like very matte like textured cover which is very interesting i also bought this trilogy if you don't know i the way of shadows by brent weeks which is the first in the night ender trilogy i absolutely gave this five stars i loved it i owned this huge bind up i still have it it's 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 down here uh but i can unhaul it now um i own this really huge bind up that which was difficult to read out of so I have since purchased the new trade paperbacks of these. The Way of Shadows, Shadows Edge, which sadly I gave the, the second book three stars, hoping that the third book, Beyond the Shadows, will redeem itself when I read it soon. I also, like, have been hearing nothing but great things about this book. So I decided, hey, let me pick it up. Let me see what the hype is about. And that's going to be the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. I read The Red Sister. No, I didn't finish the third book. I DNF'd it. Um, so I'm not quite sure if his writing style is for me, but I've heard such amazing things about this and wanted to jump in and see what I thought of it. On the other side of that, I've also heard nothing but great things about this book, and that is going to be The Will of the Many by Jane Eilington. And the, I haven't read his first trilogy that starts with The Shadow of What Was Lost, but I've heard nothing but great things about this. People are calling this the book of the year, their favorite thing ever, and I want to be in the hype. So I bought the book. I also picked up The Lost War by Justin Lee Anderson, which is a, uh, originally self-published and has just come out now traditionally published and I wanted to support him and even though I liked the self-published cover better um I still wanted to own a copy of this and see what it was about also earlier this year I read um this the first two books in this trilogy, the third book is not out yet, but I absolutely loved it. That's going to be The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter and The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. And I don't know why they changed the kind of matte type of these covers because this is like a more of a slick cover and then here it's kind of like a textured cover. It's very strange and very weird, but I now own those two which I'm excited about. Um, I also went and brought The Sword Defiant by Gareth Honorhan, which I am looking forward to reading. I know that there's like a talking sword or something in here, so I wanted to get in hype. But here's what I don't understand about this. This is an Orbit published book, and I own a lot of Orbits, and they're like, if you can see, like these three Orbits right here, and most Orbit trade paperbacks, they have the same size. Look at this one. Orbit, what are you doing? I love you because all of your books are the same size, but look at this. Look at this. Why did you make his like such a weird size? I do not know. Okay. Also, I The Way of Eden by Philip Chase. I, Miss Madison from the channel Madison Goodyear gave me this copy, gifted it to me because we were on the team Beanie Barbarians together in the readathon in April and she had an extra copy that kind of got some water damage. So she wanted a not water damage copy and so she kindly gifted me this copy that has a little bit of water damage but I'm okay because I'm happy to have the book and happy to read it for Dr. Fantasy. And if you don't know on my channel I am doing some SPFBO 9 first chapter reads and I have bought some SPFB 9 books from the first chapter reads that I have been doing so I will haul those right quick for those that have not already seen them. This also does not include my audible purchases or my ebook purchases. This is just my physical purchases. So first we have Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves. Um, first of all, this cover is stunning and the other two books in the trilogy are also out. So the entire trilogy is out. All the covers are stunning and I cannot tell you my excitement to read this book. I don't know what grasped me about this, but we are following a younger girl, younger perspective, and I didn't, I'm not going to tell you what all these books are about, but I feel like I just love the, these covers, and I love the, love the feel of the first chapter of that one. I also uh, went ahead and got a few more. So, The First Rule by 
uh, Stephen William Hanna. He was the one that started the first chapter SPF 9 reads all over on Twitter. Check out his channel if you want more great content. But I, so I decided to read his book first. So his was actually the first book that I read the first chapter of. And first of all, this is also a very stunning cover. And so I was super excited to get into this one as well. And then I have The Mountain of Souls by Marcus Lee, which has like a, a Squid Game, Hunger Games vibe to it from what I read. I liked the writing style of the first chapter and it had me hooked. So I wanted to support the author there. Also, we have Obsidian Awakening by Sienna Frost. And can I just tell you like the work that was put into this book? Like it's got illustrations in it. Like I'm trying to find like fantastic illustrations and chapter headings in here and first of all I really love this I think this is a dark fantasy it has some romance into it but it's heavier on the fantasy than the romance but I think the romance is also spectacular we love to see it then I have The Crew by Sadir S. Samir which is very comical humorous if you don't like humor in your books I definitely would not pick this up but I love the humor in this and it was my type of humor, so I was all for it. Then we have Curse of the Fallen by H.C. Newell and I like the banter in this. It seems like it's going to follow kind of the trope where um, girl has magic and girl has to hide away her magic. I'm not quite sure, but I also uh, the cover is gorgeous. And then we have Cold West by Clayton Snyder, which is like this short tiny novella, but I loved the first chapter so much and the way it it reeled me in and felt so real the the main character's grief over his wife's death felt so real that I had to have it and normally I feel like western fantasy is if you can see this cover is kind of the vibe it's giving off is not my jam but I liked the dialogue in here and I liked the writing style and I'm hoping to read it soon because it's a fairly short read so I should be able to get to it fairly soon but that's a lot of books that I want to get to fairly soon. Like, I want to get to a lot of these fairly soon. Except for the ones that I have already read. So, I definitely have more books on their way to me. Like, why? I don't know. Why am I buying all the books? I don't know. I went and I bought another shelf and, like, legitly just about filled it up already with all the books I've bought. And uh, the next solution to that is to put the little extensions on the top of the book shelves and then I don't know what I'm gonna do because then I'll be really out of space. I have my book cart now though which is empty so I don't know how I'm gonna do my book cart. I think I may put like my TBR pile or the books that I really 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 want to get to on it. I'm not quite sure but we'll figure it out. But for now I'm gonna go put all of these books onto these shelves back here. <laughs> all right guys I will catch you later.